so it's setting up so it'll give this a couple of give us a few minutes okay and i don't know we, you know generally we try and chat like small talk but yeah <laughs> that's fine that's okay okay it looks like we are going live shortly i just wanna there we are i can see you <laughs> i just want to share this uh, can you hear me clearly yes i can hear you well thank you Great. Hmm. Just a second of this. <laughs> Lipstick on my teeth. <laughs> Great. Just want to record that. Lovely. Now we're all set, Anthea. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome to Facebook Live and another episode of um, Seeds of Hope brought to you by Succeed. And on behalf of my colleagues, Richard and Patrick, we would like to say a warm welcome on the spring afternoon. It's a beautiful afternoon. And we're going to be chatting today to Anthea C, uh, a singer, songwriter, also the director of counseling for Focus on the Family and a mother of two young children under the age of five. Um, and we welcome you, Anthea. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, Succeed is a nonprofit organization that we run, um, and we look at sort of four, four areas, which is sort of, um, we look at uh, changing people's lives through empowered learning, um, to trying to preserve the dignity of the human being. And we do that through, through several different projects, but mainly it's the agriculture, entrepreneurship, we're looking at getting coding to the children, um, of making it completely accessible, and then addressing some of women's health issues and some of the things that uh, we, we need to address in society. So um, without any further ado, I just want to say it's great having you here. I find it quite inspiring. Um, your song is, is, is absolutely beautiful. So just a few warm welcomes to Anusha, to, um, we're looking at Ishara Gavinder, who's also on here, and warm welcome to all our Facebook Live guests. Welcome, Anthea. Hello, Nishani, and hello to everyone watching. Thank you so much for, for, for reaching out and for, for having me on today. Yeah, thanks, Nishani. Thanks. Welcome, Nishani Peterson, as well. Just joined us. Um, Anthea, you start let's start by um talking about your song um recently uh with the the uprise of the gender-based violence in south africa you released a song called until the tide turns tell us a little bit about that and where, what inspired you to do that so yes nishani um it was actually uh during lockdown that I um, and I usually write gospel songs, so um, this was a little bit different. Um, and what happened was very different as well. And so it was during lockdown that um, you know um, I'm sure many of us have heard the stories about you know the the a young woman that we're faces that we're just across the media. And I began to read the media and just look at these women who were killed in horrific ways and it was really you know one week after the other that we would see there were women being killed in, in in horrific ways and it was the night that um i learned that um sego pule 
that I think she was 28 years old, 26 or 28 in the early 20s. And she was eight months pregnant and mm -hmm. she was killed and she was hung on a tree and she was stabbed. And this, and you know, when you look at her face uh, and you look at her, you know, this beautiful woman uh, that was robbed of her life, her potential, robbed of being a mother and of her future. And, and you know, this, and I began to see this and it really, really enraged me as, and I'm sure I'm not the only one that night who mm. really could not sleep. Um, I really battled to sleep. It really troubled me. It sickened me um, mm. as I'm sure it did every other woman. And so, that night, um, it was really at two, two o'clock in the morning. I woke up with the song. Uh, I just woke up at two in the morning with the song, wow. uh, the, the, the entire song and the, the melody as well. And I just took out my phone at that time and I just, just, I just, um, I just typed it in so that I wouldn't lose it uh, when I woke up that morning. And so the next day, you know, I just uh, sh I told my husband, you know, got the song you know and I think it's on gender violence for for women and without even hearing what it sounded like um, he said to me you know I think we need to record this and so um, we did um, and it so happened you know that if, uh, a month before that Nishani I was actually chatting to um, a producer wanting to thinking that I was going to produce another song that I had written in, in lockdown uh, which was more um, which is more Psalms um, called "Lead Me to the Rock," and I was actually going to record that one. And mm. so when when we when I when we got when I got the song on gender violence, I felt I changed my mind, and I felt that you know, and we felt my husband as well felt this is the song that we needed to record. Yes. So already uh, with the producer, um, it, everything just went so smoothly, and we didn't even think you know that we're going to really that I'm going to release it in Women's Month. Um, which was so, you know, everything just worked out. And so I really believe that, yeah, God gave me that song uh, for women to yes. just inspire women that there is hope and that they don't have to stay in that situation. Yeah, it's so, uh, it's so amazing that you say that because when I, um, uh, because for me, gender-based violence is a very personal issue and it's very pertinent. So for me, it's not, it's not just a political stance. It's, it's very, very personal. And it was so, so, so amazing that you said this week, you know, I also woke up at two in the morning um, and God gave me a poem, which I had, I had not conceived it. I had not heard it. I had not even thought about it. And, um, and that poem, um, You know? Sorry, Nishani, I think we, uh, I lost you there. Um, yeah, I was just saying, uh, Anthea, that, um, that God also woke me up back in 2007 with, with a poem. Um, and the poem and the, 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 the words of the poem are, are actually some of the lyrics of your song. And, and uh, you know, it also exactly the same. I had no thought, I had no, I'm not a poet. I never thought of writing poetry. It just, I woke up, I picked up a pen and I penned down a poem that became a signature poem that has helped many women um, uh, to, because it, I, I think, you know, one identifies with the words that come from that place. And I think when it comes from spirit, especially the spirit of God that works through you, it reaches spirit. You know, it's not a cognitive, it's not even a heart thing. It goes directly through the, working through the spirit of God into the spirit realm of men. And I think that's what your song does. That's what your song does. Thank yeah. you, Nishani. Yes, it, yeah, that's so true. I mean, and I've read your poem and when I did read it, it gave me chills and to see those words, you know, uh, uh, with the lyrics that were just the same, you know, um, the same words that I want to be free, I want to be me. And yeah. um, that's what the song is about, you know, um, for women, really for women to, to be themselves. And we know that, you know, when you're in that kind of a situation in a abusive relationship, you can't be yourself. You can't mm. be your, your true authentic self. You are oppressed. And, you know, uh, and I really wanted, uh, I think the message of the song is, is really to inspire 
Yeah, inspire people. Inspire people. And what are you wanting to achieve by putting your art into the world? Well, really, I feel that, you know, if God is speaking to you like he did with that poem, you know, God gave you that poem and you feel, you know, it's a message and you needed to share this message, you know. And so I, I, that's how I feel, you know, that if God puts something on your heart, some people write, you know, some people write books, uh, some people, you know, have different different ways mm -hmm. of expressing themselves. And for me, um, I I feel if I've got a song and if, if God has put a song in my heart, I've got to get it out. And if I don't, you know, uh, it will just be on my mind. So I re that's that's how I feel about music. Um, I'm so passionate about music, passionate about worship. And so I really feel that if God gives you a, a message, you know, and if you don't, if, if you don't put it out, if you don't um, get the song out or get that poem out, somebody else will, you know, uh, mm. somebody else will probably do it. And so it's important to, uh, for me to just, yeah, just to, to honor that and to be obedient and mm. to steward, you know, the gift that God has given me. Yeah, but I must say, uh, you know, when I read, that you were the mother of a two-year-old and a four-year-old, and um, and that you're the director of uh, counselling at uh, Focus on the Family, and I, I was completely awestruck because physically children at that age are are, are, are demanding, and you have uh, you know so many things on the go. How on earth do you take on such a big agenda? You know, having all of the how did you do it? I was completely inspired by you Anthea completely I'm so glad you asked that question Nishani <laughs> because yes you know life you know life is very demanding especially when you have yeah two toddlers um that especially at this age you know as uh, they need their mom and they're very dependent on their mom you know to meet their needs yeah. so very clingy I must say very clingy toddlers as well so <laughs> yes um you know, uh, and and I think that, um, you know, uh, as a mom, I have my good days and my bad days. So, yes, um, I do have a full time job as well, you know. So um, but I, I, as I said, you know, um, I think for me, singing is something that um, I've been doing all my life. Yeah. And for me, it's not an effort. And um, even writing songwriting has become very natural it's not something that because the reality is I don't have time yes I don't have time to um practice or to you know say I'm gonna write a song but God just put something in my spirit and I can quickly just type it on my phone or take out my phone and record myself you know so um I think for me you know when you when you love what you do and when you and you're passionate about something it yeah. becomes easy and it becomes natural and it's not an effort and it's not a it's not hard work uh yeah. so for me you know if you're passionate about something and something is your gifting it is so natural it's so effortless and you know god gives you the grace uh, i believe there's that in enabling grace so even though life is demanding and it's very busy um and some days i have to admit that i'm really tired but there is god's grace and his um empowerment and he enabled us to to be able to do these things mm -hmm. and you know as a sort of as a director of counseling you must you must be um you know aware of many of the trends that are that are uh, part of society in, in in south africa that's quite heavy work you know um, and um, can you tell us a little bit about what do you think, what do you think are some of the, um, the things that are, are, you know, fundamentally, what's going on? What is going on in society and families at the moment? What are you seeing? Yeah, so, you know, definitely. So, you know, at my work with um, at Focus on the Family, um, you know, at the moment and from what I'm seeing is that um, family, let me say that family is really under attack, as we all know. Mm -hmm. And uh, family is the bedrock of our society because we know that if you have strong families, you have a strong uh, society, you have a strong nation. And yeah. so, you know, our marriage rate in South Africa 
is 30 percent we have a 30 percent marriage rate which is really low we are one of the lowest um we are one of the lowest not the lowest but one of the lowest you know compared to other countries and what that means you know nishani is that um most children that grow up in uh, in south africa are growing up in you know not um a without a, a father and a mother so there's uh, probably one parent you know and then and so it means also that there's a lot of dysfunction dysfunction um we know that divorce is on the rise as well we know that divorce is really increasing these are stories you know that i hear about every day you mm. know i hear about i get these emails i get these calls um we get we we see these people you know that you know just want to you know walk out of their marriage you know um yeah. there's financial pressure you know there there are addictions that people are battling with um there is depression we know that you know there's a, a mental health right now mental health and we know that you know lockdown has also you know uh compounded that as well you know and so mental health depression um unemployment financial um financial crisis um these are things that families are facing and it's heartbreaking to to see and it's heartbreaking you know to 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 hear about these things you know and to read and when when i get these emails it always breaks my heart wherever i see that there's a family about to be broken you know so we are in our in our country we're looking at families that are hurting that have been broken um that are going children that are being you know displaced you know the world is just being shaken up because suddenly there's a divorce you know mm -hmm. and so this is what we're facing as a nation amongst femicide yeah. um amongst you know everything else that is going on but really you know uh, and god's design is family god's design is the family and that is his pattern yeah. and we know that there's uh, there's such an agenda uh, of the enemy to um to 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 displace the family and to break up the family unit and to erase even christian values yeah yeah it's quite it's quite daunting the stats i mean 30 percent and then we have such a rise of divorce even in that 30 percent you know um so how would you unpack your song into society so my song into society the words you know um until the tide turns and the chorus is really about you know how we need to wage a war yeah. and um and, and you know there's a there's a quote one of my favorite quotes is um all it takes for evil to prevail is for good people good to sit back and do nothing, nothing yes yeah. and so it's so important as much as there is such an agenda you know the agenda of the world is as i said you know to you know um uh, to bring the family to break up the family but we have to wage a war and we have to keep waging a war you know we have to have the strength to not give up to not become battle weary but to yeah. wage a war to to win this battle you know and to to do it until the tide turns and to see that through and we have to do it you know and we want to see it in our generation we want to see it in our time so that the next generation can be better yeah. and it really is my it, yeah it really is my hope you know that through the song that even the next generation of young girls that will grow to become women mm. um will you know know that there is a choice they have a choice you know mm. and um and that and to also realize you know um what that an that an abusive relationship is not a normal relationship yeah. and that they have the power to break free and we know that music is very influential we know that you know music um is also uh, can be influential um both ways you know both positive and negative and we've heard of cases where your music has been you know um a negative influence you know yes. through the lyrics of a song and so um the song's very you know uh, positive really wanting to uh, encourage women um and young girls to to be themselves to be me and that through um a relationship that is toxic 
you cannot be me so recognizing that and them being aware you know because yeah. you know no one teaches you that no one sadly no. no one no one actually tells you that growing up you know what is a a safe relationship what is a healthy relationship and what is an unhealthy relationship mm. and I, I do feel that through song you know that um through the lyrics of a song and through music that it can it can inspire i hope that it would inspire and encourage yeah, young girls and women. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that, that is that is so so important. And in the chorus, you, you do speak about waging war. What do you, what do you think that? What are some of the practical things that we, as um, just you know, normal society, can actually do? What is it that we can do to um, to kind of join forces on this? Yeah, and so I think that you know, at the moment. Um, everything is very reactive you know because as a nation you know we've waited for me one life is too many you know we've mm -hmm. we've already lost so many women you know it's yeah. so sad you know and, and you know the the women that we've seen in the media these are the ones that were killed but yeah. We don't hear about the many women. You you will never see the many women that are that are being abused. You know, yeah. or the faces. What about their faces? You know, the ones mm -hmm. that have been enduring abuse for so many years, or yeah. the ones that have walked out. The ones that that are now a living miracle. You know, mm -hmm. like you, and we don't hear those stories. You know, and we need to hear those stories. We want to hear those stories, not just the ones that, you know, didn't make it out, but the yeah. ones that had the courage to leave and the ones that are now walking miracles so that they in turn can share their story. And through that, other women can be inspired and can save themselves as well. Um, so that's one of the things that I really feel that, you know, in terms of the media that, mm. that needs to change. Um, yeah. And so, you know, uh, there's many organizations that are um, now rising up. There's many helplines. I know there's many safe centers. There's, there's a lot that's going on at the moment. Um, but, you know, I think a lot more has to be done. And I think that, you know, uh, waiting for, you know, waiting for something to happen or for, for change um, is is not always the best thing but we need to partner up we need to join hands yeah. and strengthen and support organizations that are really making a change and are really helping women and are really making a difference in this area you know to save our women to end gender-based violence to to challenge beliefs and uh, and to educate uh, young girls as well on this so i really believe that you know it's it shouldn't be something that's competitive but we should join hands, work together yeah. You know, yeah. and together, because this is how we're gonna do it. We can only do it together in unity uh, to, to wage a war against this crisis. Yeah, and it is a crisis. And you know, that's what inspired us at Succeed because it was our, um, it was our way of waging war uh, by taking away the violent choice that women have. And, and I'm sure I mean, you've heard the story if you've listened to me where, you know, I was in the Eastern Cape, but I always, I always say if a woman is having to buy sanitary towels versus having to buy food, um, that is a violent choice. And so at Succeed, you know, one of the things, and, and, and you know, you would have seen this little, little box of reusable um, disposable pads that keep girls and women actually at work uh, who are at risk um, uh, going for, for a period of five years. And we've seen a, a drop in absenteeism rate of 75%. Um, where girls who used to sort of not be able to go to school are now in school. And, you know, one of the things also is that if she's home, she's usually unprotected at home. You know, she's left alone at home for almost a week. And there are, yeah, there are so many risks um, uh, being at home and being uh, sort of, uh, you know, uh, not, not in school and unguarded um, that make her prone to violence that make her prone to violence, unwanted pregnancies, rapes, you know, that kind of thing. And so this is a practical solution that we're thinking of. And, 
you know, one of the things uh, about planting seeds for hope is actually saying, you know, we, we need it. We need to partner on this. We need to wage war. We need to we need to be practical about it and do something about it. So if you're able to, please go to our Succeed page, like the page, stay in contact with us and see how we can partner. You know? Yeah. That's, that's awesome, Mishani, to hear that, you know, those stats that you just shared. Um, uh, yeah, when I, you know, when I heard about that, you know, the lack of uh, sanitary, uh, you know, pads mm. that young girls going to school have, it was, it's heartbreaking, you know, something that I think we take for granted, you know, yes. um, and so yes, that that's amazing to hear the, just mm. the decrease. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you for that, Anthea. And let's talk a little bit about yourself. So were you always a songwriter? How did you, how did you come into this space and sort of Tell us a little bit about your story and how you came to to be inspired by the Holy Spirit. How you came to know God? Um, yeah, let's uh, let's get a front row seat in your life. So um, I, uh, you know, grew up as a PK, uh, a pastor's kid, and yeah. so I grew up in ministry, church life, and um, yeah. Um, but when you know, I did not um think that i could sing i did not have the confidence so i was uh, really really shy mm -hmm. i'm probably um like the last person that anyone would think would that could sing you know or yeah so uh, i was really yeah very very uh i had very very low self-esteem uh very little confidence in myself i didn't think i had um you know um i, I didn't feel i had a voice yes um yeah so so that was when I was really young. And so I grew up, you know, grew up in church. I did everything behind the scenes, you know, in that comes with church life, you know, uh, as part of being, you know, in in um, a family that comes from min in ministry, doing ministry. And um, what actually happened is I, um, when I was about 15 years old, uh, I did start, um, well, I was playing, you know, I did start learning the piano at five. So I did yeah. play, you know, I was part of the worship band, um, playing the, the piano and yes, in the band, but not singing, you know. Um, and so when I was 15 years old, I did start leading um, worship and I became very um, passionate. So it was something that kind of grew on me and um i think god um kind of took that and used it just my availability and my commitment and i think he he just he, he started to grace me and so the more that i you know started to find myself in christ and find my identity in him um and becoming confident in him mm -hmm. um that's when everything changed and i and and that's when yeah that's when everything changed you know and as your you know probably this you know the seed is always there and as the roots begin to grow you know and, and you because fruit only comes later you know yes. but as the roots begin to grow and as the water is you know um uh, is as the seed is watered you know and um, over time i think the more that i began to just really establish myself in God and know who I was in him. Yeah. And so that was when I think everything changed for me. And so, um, yeah, that's where it all started. Yeah. And I always, you know, uh, I loved listening to pop music uh, when I was growing up. So I loved all types of music. Um, but as I became, you know, as I was starting to lead worship, um, I obviously um, I started to listen to more gospel, and I would be uh, uh, more, and more, yeah, more of a more gospel. And yeah. I didn't listen. I stopped listening more to contemporary. Just those things just kind of fell away. And you know, um, yeah, I just uh, just always loved music. I think that you know when you when you're doing something every week. You know, and just really also, you know, being faithful in the the little things. You know, um, I think that as well is so important. You know, and um, in order for God to trust us with anything that is bigger. Um, so songwriting, you know, um, really, I started writing songs um, over the last seven years. Yes, I would say. 
Yeah, so um, that really, um, you know, um, I, I, I really must say that, you know, um, I think there's so much of uh, grace for writing songwriting, you know, um, so I think the, the seed was there. But, um, you know, I must say that, um, you know, I have just really amazing, phenomenal uh, spiritual parents um, that walk with me, that support me, that pray for me. And uh, I think it's really important, you know, who you surround yourself with. And um, I feel that, yeah, songwriting, um, there's been many, I've received many prophetic words as well over the last seven years that yes. I would write songs even before I started writing my own music and so that also really encouraged me you know just um god speaking about it and over it and so um that has been that has been yeah that's been my journey for the last seven years of just writing songs and um yeah singing it and it's been it's been interesting um it's been um really uh, also as i said very natural um, because God just would would give me the song. Um, so for me, uh, it's something that I, I don't intentionally do, but mm -hmm. I just kind of flow, yeah, I just kind of flow with God and, you know, um, find that that's the best way and it's also the easiest way to do it. Yeah, and you speak about something that Jenna spoke about, you know, she spoke about God confidence, so that even, you know, people who are shy, people who are, um, you know, uh, introverted also have the ability when God when God when God speaks through us and uses us in that way. Yeah. So a special welcome to to Wilson Jacob also from India. Thank you for joining us, Wilson. Um, what would you say, you know, one of the comments that is coming through is, you know, how do you um, do you do anything in order to help parents start to have these conversations with young boys and young girls. What is what is your advice to parents uh, raising children in, in, in such a sort of broken society? Because, you know, you're right. We were not taught what was normal. Um, we were not taught this is not okay. This is unhealthy. So how do you incorporate that into sort of the focus on the family space and into your music? Sure. So yes, um, you know, as part of the as as the organization goes, um, we speak, we do speak. Um, focus speaks a lot into parenting, and yeah. um, that's one of our main. Yeah, it is one of our main um, topics. And so mm -hmm. you you know you you are welcome to even you know follow that on our on our website and our pages. We're always doing online events. Um, so um, that's something that I'm, you know, with that, um, I'm aware of it, but it's not something that I am, you know, um, I, I would actually, you know, be so involved with. But yeah. in terms of parenting, in terms of, um, you know, parents that are struggling with their children, that's something that I would be probably more likely to be involved in. You know, and so um, yeah, with coming back to, you know, parenting, parenting is probably I know at the moment parents are finding it really challenging, you know, especially during lockdown, you know, it's been compounding as well. Yes. You know, things that yes. you previously could do, you, you can't do anymore. And so, you know, I think it's so important, you know, um, as parents to equip ourselves, you know, with the best resources as possible. Um, but also, it's so important, you know, as parents, you know, if, 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 as a parent, if you're struggling, you know, with your own issues to also get help for that and deal, mm -hmm. deal with that, because yeah. that very often flows into your relationship with your child um, yeah. in an unhealthy way. So it is so important for us to be, you know, healthy parents, um, so that we in turn can raise healthy kids. Mm -hmm. And out. What was it like growing up as a PK? What advice would you give to 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 children growing up as fast as kids in a in a society that's so demanding and and now with social media, it's like you know there's no everything is out in the open. Everything is so transparent. What advice would you have for because it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah, so that's an interesting question. Um, you know, and it's probably just my opinion. Yes. Um, and so, yes, there is um, a lot of pressure uh, growing up as a, a, a pastor's daughter, because you expect to 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 know, you know, um, what's always the right thing to do, and 
you you you're not allowed to you know make make mistakes or you know do the wrong thing or, you know uh you'd probably get a strong reaction you know but but yes um i think that um it's important to my advice would be to embrace embrace where god has put you and in, to embrace it um, because god knows what he's doing and what he's outworking in your life and mm. there's a reason why you're in that home um and uh, the, the leadership of those parents and it's and it's probably because you have a great call and so it's so important to instead of fighting against it to actually embrace it and to mm. work with it yeah and um uh, yeah and i think that is that's my advice that what what i would say to to any pastor's kid yeah and um you know there's, there's so many talented um young people uh, today who are aspiring to uh, to be you know to, to put their art and their music their poetry out in the world um, what advice would you give them and, and you know um, practically how would they how would they do this well I, I think that you know um, it's important to know you know um, yeah what's what's your gifting you know and I think it's important to to firstly um, you know, um, it's important to have a prepared life, you know, um, not just have talent, you know. Um, um, I think it's so important to, you know, to to know the word of God, to know, yeah. you know who you are in Christ, because um, I believe that, you know, it's the world really comes to distract you so easily. And the mm -hmm. world wants to rob you of you know your potential and you know that happened to me you know at uh when i was 21 i, I saw it and I, I didn't recognize it but i um i didn't know it was the enemy at that time but you know he really came to to steal everything you know that um because he knew you know what uh what i was created to do and so he tried to you know destroy you know everything mm -hmm. so i um, I, I do feel that it's so important to you know to know who you are in christ to to have your roots and your foundation you know established first and mm -hmm. uh, in terms of you know music and um i think it's important to you know um yeah to 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 practice to be diligent um to be hard working you know i think it's important to as i said earlier it's really important i believe that god tests you first in the small things um, before he can trust you with big things. And I really think we can forget about big things if we can't be consistent and diligent in the little things first. Okay. Um, what advice would you give children who haven't seen the tide turn yet? So just children in general, Nishani, or? What yeah, you know, it's sometimes children who are in a situation or in a home and, and they haven't seen, they haven't seen a shift yet and they, they're there. Um, what, what advice would you give them? Yeah, so for, for children, you know, who are, you know, and we know that, you know, children, especially in South Africa, are very vulnerable, you know, mm -hmm. and because there's so much of abuse that is going on and, you know, um, and they're often, yeah, they're so vulnerable. And so, you know, for children who would not sing the Titan yet, I think it's so important for them to, you know, to tell someone, to reach out to someone who they can trust, you know, whether that mm. be they can connect with someone, you know, at church, um, a youth pastor or someone, you know, at their school, um, a teacher, someone that they can trust that they can tell their story to um, instead of, you know, living in silence and mm. feeling like they don't have a voice and yeah. what they're going through doesn't matter because it does matter and their story needs to be heard um, so that they can, can be helped. It reminds me of, it actually reminds me about, um, you know, uh, an email that I received a few months back, you know, um, from, um it was uh, a young girl that was really in a home and yeah. it was 
it was it's a girl in Africa actually, and she was just sharing about you know um, her family that um, where there's a bit of an abusive situation and she's the head of um, the eldest daughter and how like you're saying you know she wants to see the tide turn but she yes. feels she can't do anything about it and she's reaching out for help. Mm -hmm. And the fact that she reached out to help, you know, at uh, Focus, you know, means that, you know, she's doing something, she's taking action um, as the eldest daughter in a home. And yeah. so we're able to link her, you know, with the people in her area that could then reach out to her and help her who are nearer to her. Mm -hmm. So it is so important to speak out and reach out. Yeah, and, and you, you make a very pertinent point there because this whole thing of abuse and, and violence is shrouded in shame. You know, the reason that you don't reach out is because you're ashamed and, and somehow, even though you're a victim, you, you, the perpetrator makes you believe that you are the problem. You know, so people don't, you don't reach out, you don't... Um, you isolated. I mean, that is one of the tactics of a, of a gender-based violence or an abusive relationship is then you become isolated. Um, and, uh, and so it's so important. What would you say to people, you know, uh, so I was in that situation for 13 years and, and my children really struggled. Um, what would you say to people? And, and my family struggled. My family struggled to reach out because I would cover for I would try and cover the situation because it almost felt like a failure on my part, strangely enough, you know. Um, so what would you say to, to people who are watching this um, and watching somebody in an abusive relationship? Because it's sometimes it's not easy to just say, hey, this is what I see. Are you OK? It's, it's not actually that straightforward. You know, so how can we help if we see somebody who's in a situation? How do we, or we see children who are in a situation? How do we help? Yeah, and so you know, um, I think there's there's such needs to be such a mind um, set shift because you know domestic violence has been seen very much so as a closed fam family matter. You know, mm. it they it's their problem. Um, or mind your own business but the time for minding your our own business is over when it comes to domestic violence when it comes to women and, and children being abused um, domestic violence is actually a crime that's what it is and you know it is so important if if you are aware you know or even if you suspect yeah. that someone is in that situation you know, um, it is important to reach out to them, firstly, but also not to be judgmental, you know, yeah. um, not to, you know, not to be firstly judgmental and judging them, you know, or their response, because we don't, you don't know what it's like, you don't know what they're going through, what they're facing. And so it's important to reach out to them, walk, start to walk the journey with them, you know, mm -hmm. um, because we know that it's a process. It's not yeah. just a once off, um, you know, uh, one day event. So, you know, if you are willing, you know, to walk the journey with them or link them up to someone who can do that, you know, yeah. um, and it, it is really important to connect them with resources to give them information because like you said nishani the often that person they can't see their situation for what it yeah. is they, they yeah. don't know the reality yeah. they don't know how bad it is they're so numb to what's going on yeah. um yeah. you know um and so yeah so it's really important to provide them with with tools with resources link them up with uh, people, organizations, support groups, give them the contact numbers, you know, and then walk the journey with them, support them, show mm. up for them. Yeah. And I think that is the best way because we've got to, you know, that's the way that we're going to uh, save save more women and more children. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's so, so interesting that you say that because it is a numbness that comes from um, living into just survival. So people go into survival mode. You know, I remember on my, um, on my journey uh, back into recovery, 
Um, yeah. You know, I worked with somebody and, and she, I actually had to write an emotional vocabulary because I didn't have emotional words because the numbness had come. And so you stop feeling every form of emotion, both happy and sad, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so that is a, a very, very interesting uh, um, uh, thing to, to remember when you um, reach out to somebody as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And um, I think what, what, is your, what is your seed of hope? What is your seed of hope for South Africa today? What is it that, what is your message that you would like to give us today? So Nishani, I think that, you know, um, no matter what you, you know, no matter what, no matter what you're facing, you know, um, I was really inspired, actually, I must share this, I read, because um, we know that right now, you know, we're in the midst of a, you know, a pandemic, and with that, you know, there are so many people that are facing retrenchment, you yes. know, financial crisis, our economy is, you know, is, is not where it should be. We know, you know, that there's, there's poverty. Um, and so people are, you know, really in dire need. And um, so the story I came across it the other day, and I was so inspired um, that this, this woman, this mother of three, she um, was retrenched from her job. Yeah. Um, but she was in the paper because she started baking. She made a cake for her son's birthday and everyone just loved it and said, you're really good. You know, it doesn't just look good, it tastes good. And she actually now started a baking business, yeah. you know. And so um, I thought that was an amazing because um, that's, that's my message is that, you know, um, whatever you're facing, whatever situation you're in, there's always hope and we are never without hope you know and hope has a name um, and his name is Jesus we know that and so you know Jesus is the hope of the world he is the light of the world you know and if we receive him then we have everything and because our faith cannot be our faith cannot be in our jobs you know in our in in what the bank looks like in our in you know in, in our in material things um, but it can only be in Christ, you know, and yeah. if our lives are built on him, you know, then when everything else is stripped away and everything else is taken away from us, um, we will still stand and we can still be still and know that he is God. So that's my message is that, you know, whatever you're facing, that there's, we are never without hope and that God will never fail us as well. Um, and I know what it's like to be in sticky situations where, you know, you, you, you don't know what's, what's going to happen next. Yeah. Um, uh, so I know what that's like, you know, and I know that, you know, one of the things we have to hold on to is hope and is um, we have to hold on to Christ and we have to, you know, stay with him because our lives are hidden in him. So mm -hmm. apart from him, apart from him, we can do nothing. Mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, you, you, as you're speaking, I'm thinking of my mom because she was uh, not an educated woman, but, and after, and, and being a housewife and a mother of six children, um, you know, when my dad lost his job, um, and, I, and I looked at her, I must have been about 13 or 14 years old, and I looked at her and I said, Mom, what are we going to do? And, you know, she said to me, there's no such thing as unemployment. We have to find a way to make money. And, you know, she started off by doing, going into direct sales and then later established a business with my father that they ran for 15 years. And, you know, uh, I'm always astounded by how people, you know, just use what's in your hand. Just give yes. what's in your hand to God and be able yes. to use it. And whether that's, uh, you know, sewing masks or baking cakes, there is yes. a way out. There is a way yeah. out. Yes, you know? absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. God says that he has given, you know, to each person, he's given everyone a different gift, but everyone has a gift. Yeah. yeah. And we have to just unlock it. And what is it that you want to see in the world for your own children? What do you want to see changed, you know? For your own toddlers now. Sure. So yeah, that's a that's an interesting question. Um, but I want to see, you know, I want to see everything change. What what don't I want to see change? You know. <laughs> um, yeah, I really I want to see, you know, yeah, I want to see the tide turn, you know, yeah. on 
yeah, on gender-based violence, on femicide, you know, on poverty, you know, and unemployment, on even, um, you know, equality. Um, I want to see, you know, um, progress, and you know, and uh, South Africa, we you know, they can have opportunities that whatever they choose to do, that they know that they will flourish. And so yeah, I, I know there's a, a lot that, you know, we, we all are praying for change mm -hmm. and we mm -hmm. want to see the tide turn. And um, yeah, but I want to see, you know, um, a world where they can wake up and dream and know that that dream can come true and that it is possible. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's also very important as, as a mom to follow your own dream, because in doing so, you give permission um, and you like the way. Um, so thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for the song. Thank you for your obedience to God in, um, in bringing us the, the song, you know, until the tide turns. It's a, it's a very important message that we need to hear. Yeah. Is there anything else that you would like to add, Anthea? No, not, not at this moment. Thank you, Nishani. Thank you. Thank you so much again for for having me and for just, you know, even this this show that uh, I've seen many inspirational uh, people, women on it specifically. So I'm learning a lot as well through, you know, <laughs> them as well. So yeah, yeah, thank you so much for this opportunity and for reaching out. Uh, I really appreciate it. It's such a pleasure. It's actually such an honor to have you here. Um, and it's uh, it's really a privilege, and we've really enjoyed the song, and uh, you know, trying to spread it out as far and wide as possible. So thank you for your gifting. I'm going to put the links up on my Facebook page as well. If you haven't heard it, please, you must go and listen to the words of the, and the lyrics of the song. It is a very very important message that we um, that we need to get out there, you know. Um, so yeah, thank you, thank you so much. And uh, I guess on behalf of um, us at Succeed, on behalf of Patrick and and Richard Maestri and myself, we'd like to say thank you, Anthea. Thank you to our Facebook Live uh, listeners uh, for tuning in again and for being part of the conversation. Um, so for planting seeds of hope with us, you know, God's been been really taking this uh, to to different places, and we're very excited about what's happening. So uh, thank you and may God bless you. May God make his face to shine upon you. And may we see the tide turn in this generation. May we see it in our time. Let's, uh, let's stand together and let's see it. Let's proactively see it. Let's have difficult conversations. Let's speak up. Let's be our sister's keeper. Let's look out for children in our community. Let's become those aunties that pick up the phone and say something is not right here you know, something is not okay. We grew up in a society where we couldn't get away with anything. Um, and that was because the auntie squad was watching. So let's be those people. Let's be those people who actually care, who actually stop to make a difference and who don't turn away. Let's see the tide turn. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a good and a wonderful week ahead. And uh, we'll be talking to Joanne DeVette uh, tomorrow because he, on Friday we couldn't reach out to her because of the load shedding so we have a special uh, session with her tomorrow at 7 p.m so please remember to tune in as well thank you Anthea bye-bye everybody bye-bye bye-bye